a new title, and data broadcast Pokemon. Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Mizzle, and welcome to another Pokemon X, Y, and Z anime discussion. Today we're going to talk about a new title that was released a couple of days ago. I didn't have a chance to add it to anything because I was already in the middle of other videos and stuff, and it didn't. I didn't feel like it would make any sense to add it. So of course, we have a new title, and we have a whole bunch of data broadcast Pokemon. So first off, let's talk about the title that was revealed on Friday. At least Friday morning or Thursday at night, depending on however you want to look at it, given time zones or whatever. So anyway, the next episode after Sawyer's or Mega Sceptile and Ash Greninja battle, we get Fierce Fighting at the Kalos League Gather All of My Passion. This will be airing on August 4th, and I believe it's the 35th episode of XNYZ, I believe. Let me just go ahead and check real quick. X, Y, and Z, episode 36, so I'm wrong. Fierce fighting at the Kalos League, gather all my passion, August 4th. And, of course, let me talk about a title, which it kind of annoys me, but despite my attitude right now, I just have a lot of energy. That's why I sound a little bit different. I am very upset about this episode, since it looks like a filler the League episode. Lumio City is in a state of excitement thanks to the Kalos League. And during this excitement, Ch Ch Clement's chessman gets lost. And as chessman is walking around all alone and confused, a certain somebody appears before it. All of Lumio City is super excited thanks to the Kalos League. In the middle of all this, trouble occurs. Clement's Pokemon chessman ends up getting lost. And then the confused chessman encounters... Now, speculation is abound, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be Marin. I think Marin has seen Alon on TV battling against the League, and considering that we're entering the finals at this particular moment, I think this is a point where, of course, Marin is going to be introduced to Ash and everyone, and Alon is going to be introduced, and we're going to learn more about Marin, what's going on with Marin and her chestpin and everything, maybe even introducing Team Flair to Ash and company even more so than the than they already have, like Lysander, maybe even talking about Professor Sycamore and stuff of that nature. So it looks like something to look forward, I guess. The only problem that I have with this particular episode is... Why? Why does this episode exist? I know I'm salty, and I'm sure I'd like to make a joke about me being salty and everything, you know, like a salt shaker dancing, and Dustin, 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 and having a salt shaker dancing, or whatever, just to show you how salty I am. But why does this episode exist? Based on the data broadcast Pokemon that I will talk about, it makes it perfectly clear that at most... At the very end of this episode will be the start of Ash vs. Alon. And I'm like sitting here and I'm like, what are you doing with the League writers? I mean, you totally screwed the first two episodes over by not giving Ash his own particular battle. And you decide to give Sawyer a 3 vs. 3. On top of that, the first real battle that we get to see Ash with is against Sawyer. I, you know, it. What are you doing? What? This is for the writers. This isn't for the fans who don't care about my salty opinion or who don't give a crap. Or even even if the writers don't give a crap or the producers don't give a crap, this is for them specifically. Why would you make a league like this? Ash is the main character. Why would you treat him like this? Why would you treat the League like a joke? I mean, seriously. Sawyer suddenly becoming strong after the last time that Ash battled him, and then he loses to Sawyer, 
in such a ridiculous manner and okay that's fun and acceptable and then of course after Lon the second time Ash is like oh the Kalos League he's entering and you're only going to devote the Kalos League based on those two characters are you kidding me right now what are you doing the Kalos League should not be treated like Oh, let's give Ash amazing battles to uh, Sawyer and Lon. The Kalos League should be about those who've collected eight badges and have earned their place to be in the Kalos League. You know, I the fact that you're treating it like this makes me think that Alon is just insulting all of those people who actually wanted to be in the League. I feel like it's insulting to the spirit and the the overall championship to make the league like this. You know, Sawyer I, is understandable. Sawyer is acceptable because Sawyer, that's all Sawyer wanted to do. Before we even knew about Sawyer or even was introduced to Sawyer, he was trying to collect badges because that's what he wanted. But not only are you saying that there's only one person in the entire Kalos League that's going to be in the finals that actually earned and deserve his thing, you know, because you've already shoved down the th our throats that Alon is only there to battle Ash at his best. That's why I'm very annoyed about you, the writers and producers of the Pokemon anime, treating the Kalos League like this. It should not be a Sawyer Alon battle tournament. I, I don't know why you couldn't think of something dire or important that Ash would have to use six Pokemon against Alon's hypothetically six Pokemon to do something like this. You know, and if if it was going to go straight into Ash versus Alon, I would be less annoyed right now. But the fact is, you're going to create a large chunk of time devoted to likely Marin and backstory for Alon and introducing Marin and trying to tie this into Team Flare. And even if this is in relation to the data broadcast Pokemon that imply Team Flare, this is ridiculous. But whatever, Salt the man is not going to be here anymore because we're going to talk about the data broadcast Pokemon and hopefully I can be a little bit happier about this particular instance. So of course talking about XY34, XY and Z episode 34 we have of course Aegislash which of course is Sawyer and that's the first one so it looks like Aegislash is going to be a strong contender. I already have a feeling that Pikachu is going to defeat Klotzer after it defeats one of Ash's other Pokemon. Maybe two other Pokemon potentially. Well, I think I think the preview implies that Sawyer is going to use Slack King first. It probably might defeat a Pokemon without question, and then it'll lose to a Pokemon, and then that Pokemon will lose to Clotzer, and then of course Clotzer will be defeated by Pikachu, and then there'll be Aegislash versus Pikachu. Pikachu will likely lose. Ash will probably send uh, the the. The battlefield will probably change because Ash has lost three Pokemon. And then, of course, then Aegislash will be losing. And then, of course, another Pokemon and another Pokemon and so on and so forth. And blah, 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 blah. So I think that's what that means. So anyway, let's move on to XY episode, NZ episode 35. Septile. Of course, that makes sense considering that the title is, of course, Mega Septile versus Ash Greninja. So I'm expecting that's what it's going to be about. I'm expecting almost almost the entire battle to just be about Sceptile and Greninja, although it's possible that they might be finishing up their battle previously. So I guess it all depends. We'll find out um, next. No, not, ne not, not this coming Thursday, but the 21st is when we'll find out. I don't know if I made a video on this or anything of that nature, but I, or even in the forums or whatever, but if I remotely said that we had to wait 20 days for another Pokemon episode, I apologize, I was wrong. <laughs> so anyway, let's move on to X, Y, and Z episode 36, which of course is Chespin in the data broadcast Pokemon. So like I'm saying, I feel like it's going to be Marin, and they're going to talk about Marin's Chespin and how much of it it's... He 
danger, or maybe it'll be completely healed by the time we actually see the episode. I guess we'll just have to wait. Then afterwards, we have X, Y, and Z episode 37, which of course is Metagross. Now, Metagross is one of Alon's Pokemon that was in Pokemon Fan. I don't know if I talked about it. I think I touched upon it, but it did say that Matang was confirmed to evolve into Metagross. So I feel like Metagross is going to be a strong contender. I feel like Alon's other Pokemon might lose, uh, you know, like maybe maybe through tough battles, Ash will recall them, and then Metagross will like take out a couple of Pokemon. Like it'll be like Alon's third Pokemon or something like that, and then it'll take out Ash's third Pokemon or whatever, and then, it, then it'll like end in a tie, and then Ash's two Pokemon will have to deal with Alon's other three Pokemon or something of that nature. I feel like that's what's going to happen. So then, of course, we move on to X, Y, and Z, episode 38, which, of course, the data broadcast Pokemon is none other than Charizard. Charizard, of course, means Mega Charizard X, likely against Ash Greninja. So, of course, this... I'm expecting Ash to do very well against Alon's other Pokemon, and then I feel like Mega Charizard X is going to take a while. I still don't know who is going to win between Alon and Ash. That is one thing that I cannot even remotely speculate, because... If Ash loses, this entire league is going to be screwed over outside of having really cool battles. Because, look at it this way. If Ash loses, Ash only had two real battles, and he lost one of them. That, I feel like, is nonsense for a league. And which is why I'm not very happy at all with the Kalos League. It's like... You gave us the Sinnoh League, and the Sinnoh League it had its flaws, but it was amazing. And even the Hoenn League. And then you give us the disaster of the Unova League, which I might understand if people just were upset because of all the horrible tragedies that happened during Unova that probably prevented a very interesting story to be written. So I understand if they didn't feel compelled to whatever like there I mean I don't necessarily believe it but there was speculation that Ash would have caught Croc Rock in the episodes where Ash at least it would have seemed like it or whatever I, I, I don't know if that's accurate or not in those missing postponed episodes or whether it was just another episode that was going to be a thing or whatever. I don't know what happened in regards to Ash capturing Pokemon or whatever with all those post uh, indefinitely ban. Well, I wouldn't say ban episodes, but it lost episodes. I would say, given everything that's happened. So, uh, but and then you would think, well, maybe we should make it up for that. You know, you know, as cool as two really cool full battles are, if Ash loses. I'm, uh, it's not going to be a very happy time for me in regards to that. And then on the flip side, if Ash does win, I feel like it makes no sense because we don't have any time. Because after the Charizard episodes, we have one, two, three, four, five episodes that are likely going to revolve around Team Flare. And the issue is, even after that, we probably only have at most five episodes after that, before Sun and Moon comes out, so how is Ash going to battle against the Elite Four or Champion if he does win? And if Ash loses, like I said, the whole entire Kalos League is going to be ruined because you didn't do it properly. What would be the point of creating a tournament like the Kalos League if the intention was to have Ash lose at the very end? but not worry about Ash's other battles. Why is it that technically Sawyer is the only battle that we're really getting for Ash? I mean, yes, we are getting uh, Ash versus Alon, but Ash losing would mean that that it would be meaningless. Ash losing would just be the sake of Ash losing. Are we are we really saying that on, Ash only deserved one full battle? A battle that he won? Did we really need to see Ash rushing through all those battles? You know, I, I just... Uh, how am I supposed to like this league outside of the animation and the few battles that we're getting? Outside of that, uh, the, the league sucks as far as I'm concerned. I... Uh, but like I said, if Ash wins, 
how's Ash going to do in the Leap Four Challenge? You know, it's I'm very confused as to what they're planning or why they're treating it like this. But anyway, let's move on to X, Y, and Z episode 39, which of course seems to be a hound hour. This could be Malva backstory or Team Flare, her relation to Team Flare. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I think Team Flare actually does have hound hour as a Pokemon, and who knows, considering Malva doesn't actually have a hound doom in the games and was only given a hound doom because I guess that was the only suitable fire type Pokemon with a Mega Evolution that they were going to give Malva. Hound Dower and Hound Doom, I think, are in relation to Team Flare's uh, grunts, or and I think even one of them had a hound doom. Maybe I'm not entirely sure on that. I can't. I could be wrong, but and I definitely might be wrong. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But I think this is the start of Team Flare related focus. So let's move on to X, Y, and Z episode 40. Zygarde 50%. Now I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but of course the opening did in fact change and I may have neglected to mention this at all. But it did show us new scenes in regards to Team Flare. We saw something that looked like a distorted Zygarde of some sort or whatever, and we saw Zygarde complete. So I feel like this is definitely going to be heavily regarded into Zygarde 50%. I don't know if it means Blue Zygarde Core becoming 50% and becoming distorted or incorrectly as it is, and it needs to be stopped and reverted back to Blue Zygarde Core or whatever. Or it could be Puny Chan finally becoming Zygarde 50% form. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on to X, Y, and Z episode 41. Malamar is the data broadcast Pokemon. Now, a lot of people are speculating, and I'm one to pretty much agree with them, that we might be getting episodes in relation to the evil Malamar. Because we've had two episodes in the past about an evil Malamar. So it would definitely be interesting to see the evil Malamar that we saw, since they run away and we never had a proper conclusion, for them to be in relation to Team Flare. Maybe even see Zero Six Malamar, or even have them be... Zero Six Malamar to begin with. So maybe we'll get, actually get a battle with Malamar. So then, of course, let's talk about X, Y, and Z episode 42. The data broadcast appears to be Lucario. Now, the only Lucario that we know that it could be, because I highly doubt it would be that other trainer, because I don't know why he would be here and not her. But I feel like this is going to be about Corinna or something. I feel like the, at, at some point, I actually thought I didn't realize the episode thing, and I was like, Lucario, and then right afterwards was Greninja, and so I was like, Alon has a Lucario? Darn! Jeez, I mean, they're giving Alon all kinds of strange Pokemon, aren't they? But then I looked closer at the episode dates, and I was like, this is like right after, quite a few episodes after Metagross and Charizard, so I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess, or whatever, so, you know... So I'm thinking it's going to be Corinna. Like I said, Gherkin would not make any sense because I, it just wouldn't make any sense for it to just be him and not Corinna. So maybe we'll see Corinna, or maybe we'll just get another Lucario trainer for whatever. Maybe it'll be Cynthia's Gar uh, Lucario that we've never seen or have before. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what Lucario actually means. So, of course, then finally we have X, Y, and Z, episode 43, and we have Greninja. I don't know if this is confirmation or whatever, but it looks like this might be the final Team Flare episode, or it might be in relation to the Ninja Village. I feel like there's two possibilities. One, this is going to be the extreme climax of the Team Flare arc where Ash Greninja will be used to defeat Team Flare finally, along with Zygarde Complete, and then, of course, Ash Greninja will be pivotal. If not, and we still don't have Zygarde complete anywhere going on, then I feel like Greninja, this might be an episode where it might be time travel. I, I, I know that doesn't really make any sense, like, why would it be time travel? But I personally subscribe to the idea that potentially the hero Greninja that we, that we heard about in the Ninja Village, I feel like might actually just be Ash Greninja. And I feel like this might be an episode where Ash and Greninja travel back in time 
to the ninja village or something like that, and there's this big war with the ninja village or whatever, and then it's Ash's Greninja, who is Ash Greninja with its Ash Greninja form that stops it and supports the theory of this particular powerful Pokemon. Because one thing that the ninja village didn't mention was that the, it oversaw the ninja village or something like that. It, it just was there to protect them, and then it went away, and then they created some sort of legendary behind it. So I feel like this might be something like that, if not a climax to Team Flare. Regardless, I feel like this is definitely going to be heavily relating to Ash's Greninja, so I'm expecting some really cool Ash Greninja versus something fight. So that's pretty much all I have to say in regards to this data broadcast Pokemon of July 2016. Of course, in uh, 12 days or whatever it is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In approximately 11 days will be the next episode of Pokemon X, Y, and Z. Ash versus Sawyer first episode. So I guess that's what we're going to have to look forward to. I don't know of anything else in regards to X, Y, and Z to talk about. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Mizzle, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.